Hi and welcome back to our Minilog XD tutorial series. With part 4 we're going to introduce a new and quicker way of deploying code onto the Minilog. Honestly, deploying units to the core was a very quick endeavor until right now. So you just had to compile the code, which was quite quick, and then you would put it on the librarian and off you would go. But Cork pre-released a new and actually working log CLI. So let's integrate it into our project and let's execute it right from VS Code. So that's gonna make deployment even quicker. So now we are in seconds rather than tens of seconds. Before we jump into coding, I wanna make sure that you do have the actual and current software installed on your Kirk. There was an update, just follow the instructions. I use the system updater to get your Cork firmware updated to version 1.11. Do not forget to also do a panel upgrade, otherwise you will be asked multiple times. Should you have any questions or problems during the update, just ask me and I'll do a short video. All right, after installing the system update, let's just go and look into the GitHub where Cork has updated the corresponding files. And if you go to the log SDK, you will see that in the issues there was some discussion that it doesn't work. Um, and I will tell you what log X SDK actually is once we have it installed. So let's just use this Dropbox file here. Let's install it. Just click on the link. There you have it. Let's do download. There it is. Let's open that folder up in terminal. So let's go into my downloads folder and let's change directory into the new CLI. There it is. Now, what is the CLI? Let's just run it from here. Uh, you can see it's a command line version of the librarian. It's a very basic way of looking into what the synthesizer is configured like and to load a specify unit onto your Minilog XDE or Prolog. So let's check it out with the probe command. And you can see here it reports that it's connected to the Minilog, that the system version of the Minilog is 1.11 and that there is a uh, the following slots available that we can fill up with our own units. Now let's move that command uh, into our user local bin folder to have it conveniently installed. Now we can call it without specifying the path. There you go. All right, if you need any uh, further information regarding a command, what you can do is specify a dash H and there you have it. That's all the available arguments that you can specify. So for example, you can do a dash L. What this will show you is the configuration on the MIDI side. So you can specify an in and out port for a specific device if you've got multiple connected. This is not what uh, we were uh, going to focus right now. Our main goal is going to be to use the load command in one of our make files. So in order to use that command automatically from our make file, we just need to write some additional code and I have already built some framework for this. It's a very simple framework that you can download on GitHub. So if you want to change to the GitHub account, what you want to look for is uh, Gekart slash Minilog units. If you find this repository, it contains the log SDK as a submodule, and it contains one example oscillator that we will be using for our waves synthesizer explanation. And this structure has been built so that you can easily reuse it into your own code. 
So just fork this repository and put all of your oscillators and other units inside that root folder and give them corresponding names. And then inside that folder, this is where you will have uh, a structure like this, as you know it already, your own oscillator and unit software plus the make file and the project make file and the manifest. And that would be the basic structure for your folders. And I'm downloading the log SDK once and forever in here. So as a sub module, and I have also included a ignore dirty command over here in order that any changes inside the log SDK that you're going to make are not going to be taken into account when committing your code. This is going to make it very easy to deal with downloading the SDK. I have also included the VS code tasks JSON. The task JSON is going to execute the make from the VS code, which is going to make it very easy to execute. Okay, so now let's just clone this guy. There you have it. Now I have included a setup log SDK OS X shell command. Let's just have a look into here. Uh, you have to execute this once in order to, to initialize the sub modules. And we do have two sub modules. We do have the log SDK and inside the log SDK, uh, as you can remember from the first part of the series, there is the GCC compiler that is also a sub module. All right, so in order to execute all this, let's just start it from here. Now let's open up VS Code. You can see the log SDK that we just executed, some readme that explains the whole structure, and then the make file that's the top level make file that executes all the make files inside the individual folders for the units. So you can see here, I just have one unit defined that's the shape one. So if you want to add any additional ones, you just type them in here, like oscillator three or whatever. And then this make file, the top level make file is going to go into every individual directory and it's going to execute uh, the make file inside that folder. So in here. Now, in addition to doing this, uh, there is also a new flag in the project make file that I have added. It's called slot. So uh, now I have defined slot eight. Slots are numbered from zero to 15. So that's actually slot number nine. That's the, the slot in here. And in the make file, we are using that slot to do the upload. So in the upload, what we'll, we will be doing is uh, we are taking the slot and taking the package and we're uploading it into the synthesizer. So now you can do the following. If you are in the command line, what you can do is just type make and it's going to compile everything that is inside the individual folders. Like in this case, it's shape. And after that, the upload is taking place inside the shape folder and it's uploading the files to the mini log. And you can see here, the upload has succeeded. So that's how easy it is, right? You just type in make and it's up and running. So your turnaround cycle is very short. Now you can even shorten this by not exiting into the command line, but executing it from VS code. So what you basically do is you say run build task and then the make file uh, executes all the builds inside and it's pushing the oscillator up the mini log. So now that's how easy it is. So let's change something in here, save it build. 
done. What you should do on your mini log is select a, an empty slot where you are already using the corresponding software synth and only the software synth. So you just turn down all the volumes for the analog sounds and you just turn up the one that is for the software synth. And then you always use that program to upload the new units and then test it out quickly. So I think with a turnaround cycle uh, for the development and uploading that is within seconds, this is a really cool way of developing software synthesizers because the complexity is so low. So that's basically it. If you're interested into what the shape oscillator is doing, just, just try it out. So upload it to your synth and then you can use the shift shape and the shape button to cycle through some of the waveforms that are included in the wave oscillator. So in this case, you can see the pure waveforms. Uh, the shift shape is for selecting the banks and the shape is to select individual waveforms inside the ROM of the synthesizer.